I was feeling bored and a little curious, so I asked ChatGPT what chord progressions bass players must know, and it came up with these five, which I actually agree with, so I'm going to show you them today. The first one is the 2-5-1, which is the most common jazz chord progression, and it allows you to navigate jazz standards and be able to play walking jazz bass lines. I'll show you now. This is as good a time as any to explain what those Roman numerals mean. Now, when musicians describe chords, you have a key and you have a set of chords that come from that key. Let's do this in the key of C major. So, C major, you have seven different notes. And you can build a chord on any one of those notes by finding the first, the third, the fifth, and the seventh, if you want seventh chords. We don't do that, we don't play chords, we play the arpeggios, which is a broken chord. It's just the notes of a chord played separately. And that principle can be taken to each of the different degrees of the scale and you get a whole bunch of chords. Musicians use Roman numerals to describe those chords. You have one all the way to seven. Uppercase is for the major chords, lowercase is for the minor chords. That seventh chord is a diminished chord, it's one that's not used an awful lot, so really just learn your one to six, and that's going to give you access to learning loads and loads of chord progressions. So coming back to that two, five, one, we can see the two chord is the D minor seven, the five chord is the G seven, and the one chord is the C major seven. All of those chords belong to the key of C. We need to know the arpeggios based on these. D minor seven. G7 or G dominant 7. C major 7. Now you can actually just play the arpeggios over all of these backing tracks. You can download all four for free. There's a fifth bonus at the end. Stick around for that. just playing the arpeggios over that. Now in terms of walking bass lines, the walking refers to the playing quarter notes on every single beat. And you don't just want to play arpeggios, you can use the notes of the overall key and you can use chromaticism to get you from one chord to another. That's just this. That's a good walking bass line where I'm starting on the D. And I'm just walking up from the E chromatically, that just means fret by fret, landing on the G beat one of that second bar. I'm using notes of the arpeggio there, and then C. There's a combination of all these things. Walking bass lines are fantastic to learn for bass players. There's so much in there, and especially the rhythm side of things is great too. Moving on to a staple of rock, country, and blues music, we have the 1-4-5 progression. ChatGPT suggested this chord progression, so we're in the key of G now. G, C, and D. Now it doesn't matter that we've changed key, whether you're in the key of C major, G major, F sharp major, the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord, they're all major. Now, in this key it's G major, C major, D major. You can just say G, C, and D. It's G major. This is great because every single one of those chords is the same quality, i.e. major. That means you can play the same thing over it in terms of an arpeggio. Here's a G major arpeggio. And C. D. Okay, let's play to the backing track. I took a few different approaches there. This is the kind of thing you might be given in a rehearsal on a session and you have to come up with something instantly. And this is how you do it. So what I did there, um, you could just hear, by the way, we've got two beats of G, two beats of C, and then one bar of D. And it sounded very familiar and um, Beatles-esque, didn't it, if I went? That's just triad. So triad is just the first, third, and fifth. So if I start on the G, 
and I play the whole arpeggio. Ignore the octave and just play the root, the major third and the fifth, which you can learn as a pattern. You get this. You can move that to the C and to the D. That's the third fret of the E, then moving to the third fret of the A to the fifth fret of the A string. And that gives you the same pattern on each and that works because they're all major chords. Then I did something like this. A bit more of a McCartney-esque melodic line. To get some more melodicism in your playing, you need the notes from the key. The key is G major. That would be the pattern just in this position here. So we're going G to C and I'm making this all up on the spot. You can do exactly the same thing if you have a little command of the notes and the arpeggios. So I'm going G, A, B, C. No, I don't want to land on C. I don't want to land on C too early, so you can go G, A, B, G. You never think about this when you're playing, by the way. You learn the scale really well, and you learn to rely on your ear, and your ear guides you. Just roots and thirds, major thirds. That's a major pentatonic, G major pentatonic. That's great for fills, I'll do that now. Now that's a more realistic option that I would probably use. What did I do there? Just root notes. So if you're looking at the chord symbols, G, C and D, all of those are root notes. And I was just following the kick drum, which was doing something like this. Duh, duh, duh. That's a hard and fast rule really, is that if you follow the kick drum, you can never go wrong. That's just roots, fifths, and octaves. Very simple notes. Moving to C, to D. Especially great in rock, pop, blues. You know, those simple note choices will work. Now we've got a one, six, four, five chord progression in the key of E major. So here are the chords in the key of E major. The one is the E major. If we go all the way to the six, that's lowercase that's because it's minor we get to a C-sharp minor chord, and then we have an A, which is the four, and a B, which is a five. You just really need to know your major scale. Right? You need to know that it starts on whatever the letter is, that's E, and it must go up letter by letter in the musical alphabet. The musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it's just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's how it works. So we have to go E, now this is an F sharp because we need to keep the, the formula going of a major scale. So E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. So all you do is you just number them. And if you want to find the six chord, you just play until you hit six. And in a diatonic key, that's like a major key like this, that one, C sharp minor in this case, will be minor. So in terms of arpeggios, let's do that first. With the backing track, just arpeggios. We'll listen to that a little bit more in a minute to see what I might do over that. But did you hear how that worked? E major over the E chord, C sharp minor arpeggio over the C sharp minor, and then A major and B major. That's E major pentatonic. Remember the overall key is E major. Pentatonic scales and bass players 
you know, we're best friends. They're just such good scales for creating bass lines. Let me do this right now without the backing track. Here is the E major pentatonic scale, just going from here to there. That's the sixth fret, the C sharp. I'm going to look at the chord progression and I'm just going to play a very simple slow bass line using some of those notes to connect up and transition between chords. That's why I love that scale so much. I think maybe the 70s funk bass players and people like Bernard Edwards, that's how I learned that minor and major pentatonic scales work so well. I just listened to their stuff and it was like, wow, that's cool. With the backing track, it's quite, I can hear some eighth notes going on. So I'm gonna do that. doing here is I'm making something up on the spot, as I mentioned before, like you would do in a rehearsal or, you know, um, a jam session or something like that. But you can also take all these ideas and just maybe don't play anything on your bass. Just have a listen. You know, what's your head telling you inside to play? You can come up with some more, you know, part based solid parts by doing that, by being a bit more melodic and thoughtful about it. You know, I'm sort of rushing things here, but Take your time. Last chord progression, we have a six, four, one, five chord progression. This is in the key of C. So that six chord in that key is an A minor chord. Then the four is an F, the one is the C, and the G is the five. So those are just the arpeggios over the chord progression and they're all the same. So far in this lesson, we've only had major and minor. There are loads of other different chord types. We'll stick with these for now. So A minor, that's the fifth fret. If you can learn a movable shape, then you can do just that. D minor would just be that same shape starting on the fifth fret of the A string. That's how this thing works. C, you've seen that, that's third fret A string. You need to know your notes really well. G, third fret, E string. Now, F, we have an open string. Otherwise, it is the same shape. I could also play it here. And you should know arpeggios all over the place. Ghost notes on root notes, really simple. Now there, I'm on the C, I need a G. So just walk up, either in one position or at one string. There are lots more chord progressions than this, but just check out the principles. We need to know what key we're in. That means a scale, minor or major, which are both related. We have these individual arpeggios and we have the notes from the key. And then we have rhythms and we have phrasing, we have our creativity, whether we want to play a bit more or a bit less, less is usually more. And all of this comes from listening to great bass players. Now there is a fifth chord progression that ChatGPT told me about. It listed it as the first one, the 12 bar blues progression. I'm not gonna go through it in this lesson because I've got this one right here that will show you a bunch of patterns, got another backing track. So go and check that out right now. If you did enjoy that lesson, please give the video a like and do subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this. See you next time.